Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this edition of Living the Little Way. Today, we're privileged to have with us our own deacon, Thane Barnier, who will talk to you and us about what it means to be a deacon. As you're aware, in the uh, Sacrament of Holy Orders, there are really three orders involved, the diaconate, the presbyterate, or the priesthood, and the episcopate, or the bishops. Uh, so today we'll understand about the vital role of service that deacons play in the Catholic Church. Just a reminder of some things uh, for the coming week. The Mass times for Christ uh, Christmas are 4 o'clock uh, on Christmas Eve and 6.30 Christmas Eve, 8.30 and 10.45 Christmas Day. There's no vigil Mass on the afternoon of Christmas. And then Holy Family Sunday, Masses are at 8.30, 10.45, and 7 p.m. Uh, the children's liturgy for Christmas is at 4 p.m. Uh, and a reminder, there's no religious education next week, uh, and that confirmation will be rescheduled because of the storm that we had uh, this past week. One of the things that uh, has occurred to me over a period of time is a need to explain uh, the role and the vocation of the deacon in the church. And let me go back a little bit to the time of the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, after Christ ascended back to heaven, the uh, original apostles and even many of those uh, first disciples were really the bishops of the church. But as they began to evangelize and spread the church, the work became so great that they needed to form a new order within uh, holy orders itself, and that was the priesthood. They were ordained to help uh, the bishop in particular parishes or house churches of the time. And as time went on, it became apparent that there was also a need for a third order in holy orders, and that was the order of deacons, whose primary function was to help with the liturgy, but more particularly to be the vehicle of the church's charity, to preach and teach and help spread the gospel that way. So I've asked Deacon Thane Barnier to be with us today to explain a little bit about his understanding of the diaconate um, and his view of the role of the deacon here at St. Therese. I'd like to welcome you, Deacon Thane, to this episode. You are usually on the other on end, the other of, the end camera, of the camera, yes, yes. Uh, filming everything. So um, you have kind of an interesting background. You uh, grew up Baptist and um, uh, converted to the Catholic Church after you were married. And down the road, you uh, discerned that not only were you called to the sacrament of matrimony, but also to the sacrament of holy orders or the permanent deacon, uh, diaconate. So explain to me a little bit about um, what it means to be a deacon. When I started researching what the diaconate really was about, um, the idea that it's not so much what deacons do, but who they are, um, and really that focusing around that, that threefold ministry uh, of the word, the altar, and charity. Um, and being kind of the arms of the bishop out in the community, taking the gospel out to the fringes. Um, and just that, that being ordained specifically for service. And the more I learned, the more I realized this was really a lot of who I was personality-wise. And even growing up Baptist, uh, this idea of we have to care for those less fortunate than ourselves. We have to help those who are struggling, we have to serve those who need the light of Christ. I was always taught that's what it means to be a Christian. So as I really started researching the diaconate and who deacons are, 
it became apparent to me that this really was who I had been raised uh, to be and what I had been raised to believe. One of the things that you mentioned was being the arms of the bishop out in the community. And so when you come into a parish, uh, the priest or the pastor is serving as the uh, representative of the bishop in a particular parish. And so through the arms of the pastor, you're also reaching out through the arms of the bishop as well. Absolutely. So the, the priest is the bishop's uh, delegate of, of kind of that person of Christ in the parish. So when we're assigned to a parish, we're assigned to, to aid the pastor uh, in, in all those acts of service within the parish level as well. I just want to kind of go over the um, understanding of what the uh, Sacrament of Holy Orders is. There's really um, three parts of that sacrament, um, and the fullness of the sacrament comes in the bishop, uh, the ordination to the, to the uh, episcopate or the, being a bishop. Uh, the second order uh, is the order of the priesthood, um, and that uh, priests serve uh, primarily at the altar and also teaching the Word of God uh, in a whole variety of different uh, ways. And they have uh, the completion of the sacrament to the degree that they can do confect all of the sacraments with the exception of holy orders. Uh, and then finally, we have the third order, which is the order of the diaconate, uh, which is an order, as you've mentioned, of service and charity uh, and also uh, assisting at the altar and the word of Jesus Christ. Given that understanding of the threefold uh, parts of the sacrament of holy orders and that the fullness comes in the bishop, and so uh, you and I both serve at the pleasure of the bishop and uh, we pledge obedience to the local bishop. You often see that there are uh, younger guys that are called deacons. Uh, they serve in parishes and they're still in the seminary. Um, <clears throat> is there a difference between you and them? Sure. So there's two different kinds of deacons. There's the transitional deacons and the permanent deacons. Um, transitional deacons are uh, seminarians that are moving on with the intention of becoming ordained priests. Um, and they're ordained to serve in the diaconate first because I think it's very important for us to realize that all of us, deacons, priests, bishops, we're all ordained deacons first because we're all ultimately called to serve the people of Christ. Um, and it's a, a time for them to understand that aspect of even as they move on to ordination in the priesthood, they're still called to serve the people of God. Um, Permanent deacons are ordained for that service role with the intention that we're never moving on to the priesthood. It, it does happen in rare occasions where uh, a young permanent deacon, his, his wife will pass away and he'll already have that level of education and move on to the priesthood. Um, but those instances are very rare. I retain the uh, ordination to the diaconate, although it's suppressed now because of my ordination to the presbyterate. So uh, you have to be ordained a deacon to be a priest or a bishop. Uh, and so I uh, always prize those times that I experienced what I did as a deacon. Sometimes people will say to me, you know, if I have to be gone, um, and I'll say, well, you know, we can't have mass on a certain day. They'll uh, sometimes say to me, well, can't the deacon say mass for you uh, and how would you respond to that well as a deacon i haven't been ordained for that role to stand in the person of christ and consecrate the eucharist in to the body and blood of jesus i could step in and do a communion service using uh, um, hosts that have already been consecrated into the body of christ um, at mass, at, right at during a mass, those are consecrated, and then we could do communion and the liturgy of the word portion. But that's really reserved for um, emergency circumstances. It, it's not the full sacrifice of the mass, um, so it isn't. It isn't the same thing. 
So if, if we were in a foreign country, let's say, and um, the priest was unavailable, you could do a communion service on the weekend uh, with the permission of the pastor uh, to do that. Um, but it's not, you could, you could attend uh, church, but it would not be the same as attending uh, the sacrament of, of the altar or the Holy Mass itself. Is that what, what you're saying? Correct. A couple of months ago, I was out in Montana, um, and I was visiting uh, one of the uh, Indian reservations uh, in eastern Montana where I grew up by, and uh, they, they only have a priest come through uh, once a month. Um, so the bishop has asked a lay person there to do the, the, the Sunday celebration in the absence of a priest. Um, so they consecrate enough hosts so that they can do that throughout the month. Um, so that at least people are still coming. They're receiving the body and blood of Christ. And they're, they're participating in the liturgy of the word of God. Um, and I was blessed to be able to, to assist with that. But it's, it's still not the same thing uh, as, the sacrifice. as the sacrifice of the Mass. Um, you're also married, and so that presents a double challenge living, really, ministries that could very easily, well, certainly marriage is a full-time responsibility, Indeed. but the diaconate is also something that can very easily uh, engage a lot of time. So how do you balance those two things? It's funny you use that word, because that's what I was going to say. I learned very early on that balance isn't just a noun. Balance is more importantly a verb. Um, they're never going to be equal. There's going to be times when ministry is going to demand more of my time. And there's going to be times when my marriage is going to demand more of my time. And it really is about communication between Joanne and I. Knowing when things are getting out of whack, when one needs attention over the other, and just working together to do the best we can to maintain that balance as best we can, knowing that there are going to be times when, th when one is going to raise higher than the other at a certain moment. Sometimes people would say, well, you know, if you're married uh, and, and things are going well with you, why can't the priest be married? I'll tell you, um, I don't have children at home. If I had a, a children and a full family that I was trying to raise, I don't know how I could possibly... Uh, maintain all the things that I have to maintain, um, all of the duties that I have to the parish, which are a fraction of what the pastor has to the parish. Um, what you would wind up with is priests who are torn in two different directions and not able to fully devote themselves to both aspects. Um, you ask any of the deacons and they'll tell you it's very difficult, um, even when we don't have kids at home. I am blessed that... Uh, my wife is totally committed to this with me, and all of our wives have to be. Uh, but Joanne is also very active in, in uh, ministry with me in the areas where she can be. I, I try to imagine what it would be like to be a priest and be fully dedicated to my parish, available to my parishioners when they need me, and still trying to maintain a marriage, which, like you said, is a full-time job. And Very much so. And, and it would be... Um, I, I would not be the best husband I could be. I would not be the best priest I could be. And that's the main reason why I think if you ask, there aren't very many priests that I know that are in favor of a married priesthood for that exact reason. If I were to ask you uh, to tell me in maybe a couple of sentences what the most important <clears throat> function you engage in as a deacon I think the most important function of a deacon uh, in any of the things that we do is this idea that we are to bring the people to Christ and bring Christ to the people. Um, during Mass, the, the parts that I say, uh, you know, um, everything that I do during Mass is designed to help bring the people into the sacrifice, whether it's proclaiming the gospel, uh, preaching the homily, uh, inviting people to, to offer a sign of peace, or even you know telling them the mass is ended, go forth to love and serve the Lord. All of that is designed to help the people come to Jesus at the altar, becoming present uh, through the Eucharist. And that same thing, 
goes into all of the other uh, ministries that I may do, whether I'm in the hospital, visiting someone who's sick, in the prison, visiting those who are imprisoned, uh, working with uh, the homeless, whatever aspect we're out on the fringes, it's all about bringing people to Christ and Christ to the people. As Jesus said, he who wants to be the greatest among you must be the servant of all. Okay. And that's really what I strive to do in my diaconate. I appreciate all of you being here today at this episode of The Little Way and hope that this has answered some of the questions you may have about what it means to be a deacon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Until next time, God bless you all. Amen.